you know what it feels like to have a machete taken to your lungs. To hold a drill in your hand for so long you forget it's not a part of your body. To work in a place where light at the end of the tunnel is more than just a figure of speech. Welcome to the mines, where men work so far underground that sunlight is manufactured from headlamps and golden soot, where the sound of breaking bodies is drowned beneath a cacophony of hollow coughs and hammers, where disease festers in the air as if the earth were holding a grudge against mankind for failing to keep her secrets. In the South African gold mine, the reality of tuberculosis can make every breath feel like a death sentence. The toxic dust from million-year-old rocks like a swarm of dancing landmines along the walls of your ribcage, a bombardment of bacteria crawling through your throat tsunamis, a silicosis and sweat crashing against shores of black backs like a crystalline whip, so these men, with cobblestone skin, jackhammer hearts, and jawbones clenched like redemption, expose themselves to a world of disease and degradation unlike anywhere else on Earth. How ironic that the industry responsible for the success of South Africa's economy is also culpable for a pandemic wiping out thousands of her people. These are the consequences of corporate indifference, where executives unwilling to part ways with a pocket change percentage of their profits enable illness to run rampant in a community they are supposed to protect. With golden clocks hanging in their offices like stolen halos, they refuse to provide real care for the very people who created their wealth. So why would anyone subject themselves to this? But what choice does a man have when he has to feed his family? When jobs are as scarce as roses on a crumbling battlefield, when he knows his wife and children can't survive off of unfulfilled promises. So he puts on his heart, turns on his light, and marches miles beneath the earth amongst flocks of brown faces, with no choice but to pummel his heart against the walls of this mine as if he were searching for his dignity. And when the miners are deemed too sick to work, they are simply sent home. Like disposable human tools that have lost the sharpness of their edges, with HIV and tuberculosis cascading in a spiral-bound pirouette through their bloodstream fathers, falling in the eyes of their children, praying they don't succumb to the same fate, lying on deathbeds made of debris and lost hope, screaming at the top of their lacerated lungs, I am sick, I am tired, I am dying. Imagine your father choking on the inevitabilities of his past. Your mother, widowed by the misfortune of other people's apathy. Your brothers and sisters, settling for a future that seems all but inescapable. How much longer can we watch as generations of black men are cycled through a system that treats them like dirt? How much longer can we simply watch them sent home? to die.